for this tutorial, I am going to be making a coaster. Got a new coworker. She's not really new, but back to our staff again. And um, it's like having somebody that's just been out of town a while. So since she left, I made everyone a coaster because I started doing epoxy and tumbler stuff after she was gone. And so she's the only one that doesn't have her own coaster. So I am going to make her her own and I'm going to use my new love, which is graffiti. I love, love, love this glitter. Can't wait to show you what it looks like outside of the jar because inside the jar, you just can't see it. So I don't have new <clears throat> dispensers for my new epoxy yet. I switched brands and just haven't bought them because I keep forgetting. Uh, so I do this pretty much the wrong way. You're not supposed to measure them in the same container, but I do. So I'm going to do 30 mLs because it's pretty much almost full with 30 mLs. Not perfect, but close. So I'm going to pour to the 15 milliliter line. Part B is the thinner of the two. It's about 50 degrees in my shed right now because it's cold outside. So I've had them sitting under a shop light for just a few minutes while I finish up that wood grain. Um, so it's going a little slow and I will end up with extra air bubbles. But for what I'm doing right now, it's not that big of a deal because whenever I stir in the chunky glitter, it's just going to make more <clears throat> air bubbles. So anyways, I've got that right at the 15 ml line. I'm at eye level with it. You can't see my face because of where I'm at, but uh, I'm at the 15 ml, or 15 ml line. So that's all I'm gonna use for part B. Um, part A is the thicker of the two. So I feel like pouring the thinner of the two allows it to not stick to the edge of the cup nearly as badly. It seems like it, and if there's any tiny little increment of help, it saves my sanity just that much more. So I'm going to stop pouring just past the 25 so that it can kind of catch up and allow for the drips to kind of stop a little bit more. The advantage of this being kind of cold right now is I'm not going to be as worried about my glitter sinking. I did the glitter on those other molds a little too quickly, so it, it sunk in some spots. It's actually really obvious on the silicone coasters because it's so thin right here in the middle. And then <clears throat> the way these little lips stand up right there where the lip is it just shows really badly if you've uh, let it settle or not when i first made these i didn't really know any better and i just poured my glitter on top and hoped that it would sink and that was really really dumb because it did not sink not where i needed it to anyways so after about three or four, then I kind of wisened up to the fact that it needed to be stirred. That's when I really started doing more of this. Start like mixing it in the cup and then pouring it. Medicine cups are cheap if you get them on sale. If you get them at the store in the epoxy craft section, you're gonna pay a pretty penny. There is a medical supply company that does uh, frequent free shipping. I feel like it's frequent. Maybe it just happens that it's enough that I get it before I run out of stuff. I get boxes of 100 gloves for just over $3. And then a box, excuse me, a sleeve of 100 medicine cups for a dollar. I mean, I'll spend three or four cents in medicine cups on a project easy 
I spend that on far stupider things. I know it's bad for the environment. So I make my carbon footprint just a little less by doing other things. Number one, I reuse my straws. I reuse, I use my tumbler everywhere I go that will allow me to use my own cup. I do it. The advantage to that is there have been plenty of places that didn't even charge me for a drink because I wasn't getting one of their cups. I don't know why. I'm sure that's not policy, but I guess that particular employee that rang me out those couple of times must have just thought that it didn't count. I'm not sure. So I use the paddle end of my uh, stir stick. Now I'm about to use the flat end because I want to scrape the edges. I think you can see how clear it is other than the bubbles. When I do the scraping on the side, you'll probably see little cloudy spots. I don't know if you can see that there or not. It's like a little oil slick spot. But that is just spots that haven't been mixed in properly because they were stuck to the side. And like I said, I'm not worried about air bubbles. If these were a whole lot warmer, and if the epoxy was a whole lot warmer, there would be hardly any air bubbles. Or if there were, they would rise to the top really quickly. And then I could kind of scrape them off paddle style like I did the other air bubbles. So that's pretty good mixed wise. So hopefully you can see it. It's nice and clear. No, no little slicky spots. So this is the graffiti glitter. Just going to kind of pour a bunch in there, stir it up and pour some more. Like I mentioned on another video, I kind of shoot myself in the foot when I do the bigger cup or the bigger quantities like this because it definitely makes it harder to mix in the glitter. Not impossible. I just have to be extra cautious not to go over the edges and fling it everywhere. So I'm going to add a little bit more because I know that that wasn't quite enough for how big of an area this is about to do. Just kind of stir that in there. Again, I want to scrape the sides just to make sure there wasn't a spot that I didn't miss before. And I don't know if you can hear it on the video, but it is howling wind right now. We have the cold front that moved in this weekend, and it's definitely wreaking havoc on everybody's allergies. <clears throat> so, got that mixed in. It's not super duper runny, so I'm going to go ahead and pour it in and hope for the best. Yeah, that's decently thick. So I just pour right in the middle and just let it flow right over the edges. And you can kind of see it filling up. Sorry for the shadows. I'm doing this on the counter with the light above versus early, earlier videos. I did the... Um, camera not far from the light. I wanted to show the epoxy mixing portion. So that's pretty decent there. I've got just a teeny bit, like maybe one blob of epoxy that I can add to my Lego man right here. Like I said, this is just a funny little project that my daughter and I saw somebody had posted that they had done one of these. And I didn't care to try and use fresh epoxy. Maybe if I was selling these to sell as decorations, that'd be a whole different conversation, but it's not. It's really just something funny to kind of acquire. I have some little flakes in there that I was trying to cover up. Just something to use this leftover and just to have a little a cute something. Kind of eye-catching if I decide to use it on a display. 
but I've got one. <clears throat> kind of pulled it out of the mold a little too soon, but I'll show you because he's pretty cute. I need a good name. So if anybody has a good name for this guy, let me know. He's got a little bit of all kinds of colors. Let me move the camera a little bit. So we've got just literally layers upon layers upon layers of the glitter leftovers from before. It's kind of fun. It stands up. So if I decide to use it in a vendor booth display or anything like that, it'll be eye-catching. I did go ahead and finish it off with a bigger batch. That's probably only like 10, 10 mLs just to have a solid back there because otherwise it would end up a complete hodgepodge like that. Which that's fine too. I do wish that I would have left it in here longer because uh, that's really thin right there. But it works for what it is. So anyways, he's a cutie. Or she. Whatever. No <laughs> decisions have been made on that. Um, I've got a little bit of air bubbles coming to the top now. I'm going to tilt this. You can kind of see, you kind of see some of them popping. But right there is a big spot of air bubbles. I'm going to I wait for a minute and you can see some of that glitter is floating on top. In a little bit when I take those off of there, I'll try and stir that up just a teeny bit more. But I want a little bit more air bubbles to come up before I do that. So I'm gonna let it kind of sit and rest for a minute and then I'll come back and take that off. Okay, so this has been sitting for maybe five minutes or so. You can see right there, those air bubbles are nice and ready to be dealt with. So like I said in another video, I really like this without having to do a lot to it. I'll go ahead and put a glove on because I will break out if I get epoxy on me too much. Um, I feel like it really just kind of picks them up really easily. So like right here, just watch it disappear. It's like a magic act. Ta-da! This is what I normally do on another video. I just kind of scraped it straight into the Lego man, but that's really not the better way to do it. I like this. I get those bubbles off of there and I'm not really worried about having this glitter picked up and in my cup now I don't really care it's not that big of a loss I'm sure there are some people that are way more anal about it but if you use heat on your molds from what I've read, it really significantly reduces the life of them. And I feel like there is definitely a lot of truth ringing in that. Because I have a few molds that I really blasted them with heat. And I've already had to replace them. I have one mold that I ordered from an Etsy seller. I paid a lot of money for that thing. It's beautiful. And it's very detailed for um, the shape of Texas. I really like it, so I am not going to risk ruining it. So I'm just going to do this to address the stuff that's floating on top. It'll settle back down in a minute. Kind of deal with that right there. There was a naked spot there. And that's pretty good. Any more air bubbles here, I'm not going to be super worried about because that's the bottom. I was more concerned with them rising from the top. And since I do have a little bit more to add to my Lego guy, I'll go ahead and add that. We'll do it in the middle. That way the air bubbles aren't visible from the side. I'll just kind of give it some volume stuffing if you want to get technical in another way. So that's pretty good. Yep, that's all we're going to work on for that guy. And then I will unmold this in the morning. And then I'll let it sit and cure for a couple of days. If I get impatient and take it to her, 
I'll just tell her, I'll put it in a Ziploc and I will tell her that it is off limits for however many hours until it's uh, considered food safe. That way she touches it and touches her drink or whatever. I'm not going to be at any way risked at risk of exposing her to anything. So that's all I've got for the moment uh, for this guy and I will unmold it in the morning. Our mold sat all night. It's not cured, like FDA approved cured, but it is good enough for me to take it out of the mold. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'll probably go ahead and put this in a baggie and take it to work this morning and tell her that it's hands off until Friday. So I'm just going to gently kind of break the seal heel here. <clears throat> it it's going to be soft, but that's all right, because for what I'm going to use it for, it's no big deal. Actually, this may not be happening this morning. It's about, I don't know, 20, 30 degrees this morning, and so it's not wanting to release. It's a lot softer than I anticipated, so we're going to let it be. I'll try it again tonight. Otherwise, yeah, that's still pretty sticky. That's unusual. Um... Maybe I'll go ahead and put my shop light on it. Yeah, you can see where I left a mark right there. I'll go ahead and put my shop light on it and help it kind of cure, get it warm in here. It's pretty cold in my shed right now. I'm wearing fleece and sweats and all that, but I'll go ahead and push that down because then I won't have that weird lip to cut off. But I'll try again. So that's how you know it's a little too soon to release it. I'm glad I did this so I could show that. Uh, it's just not wanting to come undone. So I'm going to leave that, flatten it back out. No big deal. Uh, you can see where that glitter floated on top. That really doesn't matter because that's the bottom. So we'll try again tonight. Okay, so here it is, uh, 7 p.m. So this is definitely ready to come out now. It is rock hard now. Partially because it's really cold outside and um, it's probably half frozen. So I'm just going to pull the edges around it. Just kind of peel it off like that. Ooh, that turned out terrible. I had a huge air bubble fail. All right, well, this officially became my shop coaster. I'll put it right here in my scrap my bob that holds my little trash basket. So, um, yeah, that was ugly. I guess I let it sit too long. That's my guess is that it just didn't pour properly. I probably should have poured around the edges a little bit and just kind of pulled it and see how it was settling. And then the way I pushed it down this morning, which is not something I typically do, it made these horrific rough edges. So this is literally going to go right here in my little scrap my bob and that'll hold my, catch my sweat on my drinks. So I will try round two in a little bit and then um, I'll go ahead and add the results to the end of this video. So yay for failures, but this isn't one that I can cover up like I can if a cup doesn't turn out as intended. So anyways, uh, this is from a kit off of Amazon. It came with a hexagon, I think, maybe a pentagon, pretty sure a hexagon uh, and a square as well, but they take significantly more epoxy and this works great for most 20 ounce drinks, unless it's just a fat bottomed uh, cup. So I'll add that one in a little bit. Okay. So last night I poured up another batch of epoxy and Poured some graffiti in there, just like the last one that was a total fail. And it's been sitting all night. It's nice and hard. Yesterday, it was not hard. I actually had my shop light going on it all night with the cup I was turning. So, I'm just going to kind of peel that around. This time, I did it just slightly different than I've done in the past. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. 
I mean, tiny, tiny air bubbles, but I've had that on every single coaster that I've used glitter on. Um, this last time, last night, I actually mixed up a batch and then I poured into that rim right there and then a thin layer here and then let the rest of it sit and then poured the rest of it. So I have just a couple of spots that you can kind of see through right in here, but sitting on a table or on a desk, it's going to be perfect. So uh, that completes this particular tutorial. And once again, there's this one compared to yesterday's total fail that had a big chunk missing out of it. So success.